All right. Thanks for all the prayers. And um, we thank God for a best experience tonight with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. So we're looking at 15 elements. And uh, by no way is um, uh, this exhaustive, meaning that there will be many more. But we're just identifying some of these elements. If I'm unable to finish uh, this week, I will continue next week. So uh, these elements are essential to any marriage that will be successful. And so it's our responsibility to ensure we work at our marriage. All right. These 15 elements will help to build a strong, healthy and long lasting marriage. All right. And uh, you, you need to understand something about marriage. We have to work at it. If you see a married couple who are doing fine, believe you me, they are working at their marriage. If you see two loving people who have been married for many years and say, wow, these people are just perfect for each other, believe you me, both of them are every day working at their marriage. They are both forgiving themselves. They are both overlooking faults. They are both uh, loving one another to make marriage work. All right? Okay, so the first thing we're looking at out of the 15 elements has to do with communication. Uh, we often take communication for granted in our marriage, in our relationship. But the reality is this, and let me just let you know that when communication is dying in a relationship or marriage, that relationship or marriage is also dying. Communication is so powerful. There's something about saying something and speaking and responding well. If you notice, even when you give birth to a baby, if that baby does not make a sound, the, the doctors and nurses are going to get worried. They will regard that as a problem because there has to be a sound. They will almost want to give the little baby some spanking so that there can be sound. This is because sound announces life. See, communication is powerful here. Yeah. The moment the baby makes a crying sound, then we know that, yes, everything is good here. Yeah. That's how powerful it is. You remember the Yoruba folklore programs we used to watch while growing up? Call it a real read again, Yoruba. You know, epic movies and all of that. And then there are two of them fighting and they are using incantations. You will notice that the moment one of them can no longer reply, the incantation, then that person loses. But you also notice that even if the guy has fallen to the ground, if he can still say something and come up with some incantations, then he's going to get up and continue the fight. The moment he's muted, then everything ends at that point in time. You understand that? Even in proposing to a lady, something has to be said. Nobody proposes in silence. And of course, response has to be given as well. So you see, uh, before a relationship can start, there has to be communication. So that gives you an idea. Whatever is the beginning of a thing is the sustenance of that thing. If the relationship or marriage couldn't happen without communication, then it wouldn't stay without communication. You will also discover that on the wedding day, the only thing you did that they now proclaim you as married people, all right, is that you made some vows, you communicated something, you said something to your spouse and your spouse said something to you and then you are joined in a holy matrimony. You see, communication is powerful. If you look at our relationship with God, all he's trying to do is communicate with us. Everything is trying to do is communicate with us. The moment you stop communicating with God, your relationship with God begins to die. There has to be constant communication. There has to be constant, you know, speaking to him and he talking back to you and giving you instructions. That's how important communication is. So basically, this is why the devil fights your communication. 
he doesn't want you to communicate well. Sometimes you'll notice that your spouse will say you said something that you never said. Sometimes your spouse will say you never said something that you are so sure you said. You see, all this confusion that comes, all right, is because the devil doesn't want your marriage to be a beautiful experience. You remember when uh, that little boy was brought to the disciples and they said he had a problem, he's dumb, he's unable to speak. And they brought him to Jesus eventually, and Jesus Christ said, Thou deaf and dumb spirit. In other words, it's not just about not being able to speak, it's also about not hearing anything. So because he couldn't hear anything, he doesn't understand the diction of words. Because he doesn't, you're not hearing anything from God, you don't understand uh, the vocabulary of God, so there's nothing to say. It's the same way in marriage, all right? There has to be exchange of loving words between one another. That little boy that was brought for prayer, his father said that when that spirit possesses him, possesses him, it will oftentimes throw him into the water and oftentimes into the fire. And see, that kind of chaotic situation is what happens when somebody is deaf and dumb within his or her marriage. You see, the devil wants you to be muted because he knows when you are muted, then he can bring assumptions into your mind, like fairy darts. It can bring suggestions about your spouse that are never true. And so after a while, when you now verbalize that to your spouse, then your spouse even gets hurt the more. And then when he's hurt, he's even unable to express that. All right, so it becomes a cycle. You need to understand the tactics of the devil because the scripture says, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. So the aim of the devil is that you don't communicate well or you communicate and you don't hear yourself. But tonight I pray, every deaf and mute spirit within your marriage, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. We bind such spirits right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the precious Holy Spirit of God will move into your home and into your marriage and help you to learn how to communicate lovingly with one another in Jesus' name. Okay, so you will notice that within the context of marriage, there seems to be one spouse who talks a lot and is very expressive, while the other one doesn't talk as much and it's not as expressive, all right? So the one that is expressive gets um, blamed most of the time for using sharp words when there are communication or when there's an altercation or when there's a quarrel. It's always, oh, his words are very sharp. His words are these, his words are that. All right? So the other one that... Um, thinks more and does not talk is also actually speaking inside it's just that this person is not expressive and that even blocks the communication more because if most of what you are thinking about your spouse are not pleasant things then it will affect your ability to communicate well you see, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So if what you internalize every time is something that is unpleasant or disagreeable with your spouse, then you are going to find it difficult to talk, to flow in communication. You see, but communication between husband and wife should be a friendly thing. Should be naked and not ashamed. Be able to just speak like friends, lovingly. I mean, when you catch up on your on your old friend. How do you speak? How do you talk? How do you relate? That's the way you should be. Actually, your spouse should be your number one fan. 
should be somebody you are anticipating and looking forward to, to discuss with, to gist with, to laugh together. That is the beauty of marriage. You must learn to talk about everything and anything. You must be transparent and vulnerable with each other and be able to advise one another. You see, God has placed in your spouse the grace and the strength to stabilize you from making mistakes but when you don't talk when you internalize or you hide then you are going to fall into mistakes of often so you need to understand the synergy that god has created through your marriage and then engage this synergy to your advantage and not to your disadvantage all right so in a marriage um the one who finds it very easy to talk more and is expressive should uh, teach the other person and encourage the other person to talk. Uh, there's always that spouse that is always in the ease or her shell, you understand. So rather than turning into a fight or quarrel, that it looks as if you want to make me... Uh, uh, a, a radio device to be talking without a response. Uh, I can't do that. I mean, this is our marriage. We've got to talk. I don't know why you are not talking. And then you say all of that. It's not helping out. But you have to lovingly initiate conversations and then help your spouse. After you've been married for a while, you will know what brings out uh, your spouse from his or her shell so that he can talk. And you have to learn to do this, okay? So uh, do, doing things together lovingly will help in that communication. Think back about when you are wooing your spouse. How are do, what are those things that your spouse likes? Those are the things you still have to keep doing around this time. For example, between me and my, uh, uh, my wife, I do a lot of talking while my wife do a lot of listening all right so i i mean i could talk endlessly without getting tired all right but the reality was that i wasn't even like that growing up i used to be extremely quiet and introverted you see but when when i got married i i saw my wife as a friend and because i i do not have too many friends so we talk we talk about almost everything. I, I love talking and enjoy talking. So uh, so what I had to do is not to stay on one side and say, okay, so I'm the one that is the talkative. Why you are you are the one that won't say anything? No. But you you want to, you know, lovingly bring good conversation into your marriage and encourage the other person who doesn't talk much to start talking. After a while the one that doesn't talk at all, you will discover that the person is now the talker. In fact, the person will take over from you after a while if you are able to, you know, uh, manage that area very well. Because, you see, you can't be with your loved one and not talk. You want to say something. Don't let your home become like a graveyard, silent like a graveyard, where the atmosphere is tense. I mean, Papa Kenneth Egan and his wife visited a particular couple and Kenneth Egan said as soon as he entered, he knew wrong words have been spoken in the air, that the air was so tense you could almost cut it with a knife. You see, because words are spirits. This is why uh, there are couples who don't communicate well, that the only type of communication they do is quarrel and wrong words sharp words, negative words. This is not a good experience for your family and you have to work at it. All right. Uh, our time is almost up. Well, let me still explain a few things. Okay. So uh, communication, anytime we speak with someone, with our spouse, with anybody, uh, is made up of words, tone, and body language. All right. Words, tone, and body language. But the interesting thing is, most of the time we think the words we say is the major part of the communication, but no. The words we say account 
for only 7%. All right? The tone of voice that we use in saying those words account for 38%. And our body language while speaking accounts for 55%. You see, this is why uh, you're talking to your wife and then you talk, 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 talk. And then the very thing you talked about, she repeats the same thing a week after. And you're like, what? What's wrong with you? I just told you about this. But what you did was just 7%. You didn't get the tone right and you didn't get the body language right. So you never communicated. All your effort of three hours of talking was just 7% out of 100% that is meant to be. All right. So if your words are good and your tone is wrong and your body language is wrong, then your communication is ineffective. All right. No matter how powerful your words are, once the tone is not ideal, once the body language is wrong, then you have not communicated at all. Your tone of voice, all right, includes the pitch, the volume, the pace, the inflection, and this convey a lot of meaning and we influence how our message is received. For example, if I tell my wife and I say something like this, I want you to go to Lagos tomorrow. Check out the difference with this. I want you to go to Lagos tomorrow. Where about this? I want you to go to Lagos tomorrow. Now those are three different things. Even though you can't see me, but from my tone, you can guess how my body language will be or my facial expression. All right. So you understand how this thing works, that your tone has to be right and your body language has to be right. It is the body language that includes facial expression, your gestures, your posture, your eye contact. All right. All of that are essential for an effective communication. So probably now you're beginning to understand why you say something and summonize and lecture and speak and speak. And then at the end of the day, it's not really effective. The same way we communicate with our children, this is how it works. All right. Our words, our tone must be right. Our body language must be good. In conclusion, both the husband and the wife uh, us to learn how to communicate because communication is an art. All right. Um, we are able to deal with just one out of 15 elements in marriage. And I guess it's because this particular one is extremely important. You will notice that when humanity decided to build a tower that will reach to the very heavens in Genesis chapter 11. And God himself attested to the fact that what they were doing, they were going to succeed. Uh, only God knows what kind of technology they were using then. But God said they will succeed. They will build a tower that will reach to the very heavens. And the Bible gave us a reason. The Bible said the, the people is one, you know, they were so worn that rather than the scripture, they, the normal English is the people are one. But if you look at Genesis 11 in KJV, it says the people is one. They were so worn that even in the tenses, they were described that way. All right. The people is one. Their oneness was the major thing that was responsible for their success. And when God wanted to stop that ambition, he said, let us go down. And when he came down, the only thing he tapped part with was their language. They couldn't understand themselves. And the moment he tampered with their language, their effectiveness dropped. They couldn't understand each other. There was no more agreement. There was no more communication. And so the project was abandoned. 
I want to let you know that what the devil does is to tamper with the languages of married couples so that they will not understand one another so that their language will become like one of them is speaking Greek, the other is speaking Hebrew. And once there's a situation like this, their agreement is tampered with. For can two walk together except, except they be agreed? And so if there's no agreement, it affects the prayer. And if, I, if it affects the prayer, it affects the productivity. All right? So I want you to understand that communication is what the two of you have to come together to achieve with a lot of patience, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of uh, just overlooking something. It's not everything you complain about. Some of them, you just leave it and let it be. Once it's not a life and death issue, for example, uh, your husband puts his jacket on the chair. Don't let that become fight now. Leave jacket now. She means don't have the jacket. He will pick it when he needs it. Or if you can't stand that, because there are some of us are perfectionists, then help him to take it. Don't give the attitude that you have started again, Nabi. You are the one that scatters. I'm the one that is the arranger. I will let you know that I'm not the arranger. Leave it there. No, there's everything should not be a fight. This is where I kept the cup in the kitchen. Who moved it by two inches? Oh my God. All those things are unnecessary. It's not a life and death issue. You understand? So you, you need to understand that some things you just let go for the sake of peace. All right. Protect your marriage. Protect your communication. Protect your diction. Protect your marital vocabulary. And make sure you are saying the right words. You will notice Jesus Christ. He will present the church to himself. And the church is likened to the bride, Christ, the husband. He will present to himself a glorious church without spot, without wrinkle. How will he do it? By the washing of the water by the word. The washing of the water by the word is simply confession, words spoken. So you want to speak life over your spouse. Rather than talk and say the things you are going through, say the things you want to see. It is the same principle that God used for Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham to change his name from Abraham to Abraham, which means father of many nations, which is a picture of what God wants to do with his life. So every time he is calling his name, or somebody calls his name, it, it was a prophecy rather than just a nomenclature. It is the same thing that happened with Sarah. It was 90. I mean, she was 90 and she needed to give birth according to the promise of God. But the Bible recorded in Hebrews 11 that the, the cap capacity to conceive is gone, meaning that the womb can no longer retain a baby. So what did God do? God changed her name. And every time Abraham communicated that name from Sarah uh, and said Sarah, formerly Sarai, so Sarah, Sarah means princess. As he said that, it became a prophecy and her body began to gradually adjust to that of a princess to the intent that a 90 year old woman was able to hold a baby. Glory to God. So you need to understand that words are so powerful. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. How did you think God created the heaven and the earth? By words. He just spoke. He upholded all things by the word of his power. Words are powerful. When Jesus Christ got to the tomb of Lazarus, he just spoke, Lazarus, come forth. So understand that communication is powerful. It must be protected. If you are the one that is quiet in your marriage, learn to start speaking and be expressive and say the right things. If you are the one that talks a lot, learn to be quiet more and allow your spouse to talk. I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus. Your marriage will be a blessing to the world. Your marriage will not be chaotic. Every deaf and dumb spirit will rebuke them. In the name of Jesus, I declare, based on the words you have heard tonight, that every anomaly in your relationship, in your marriage rather, every anomaly, especially in the area of communication, 
they are wiped off by the blood of Jesus right now. I speak life into your marriage, good words, good communication. That becomes your experience from tonight in Jesus' name. I pray for everybody who have any form of ailment or sickness in their body. Put your hands right now as I pray. In the name of Jesus, your word says, you sent forth your word and it healeth them and deliver them from their destructions. By your stripes we are healed. I proclaim over everybody in the name of Jesus, receive healing right now. I rebuke that fever, that pain. I rebuke that anomaly in your body, sickness, disease, in the bone, asthma, ulcer, whatever it is, I command you to lose your grip now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to you, to your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, and I declare you are healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. All right, I will take a few questions now. If you have your questions, quickly put them there. My time is up, but I'll hang around a little to answer any question. If you want to ask your question anonymously, then you can send me a private message and I will paste back here and answer. God bless you. I want to believe it's been a wonderful experience. Please let, let me know if uh, this has been a blessing.